I recently done a video on a time grapher and then after I'd done the video I had a viewer ask me a question about lift angle and amplitude and could I do a video on it. Uh, I said yeah sure no problem so this is that video so if you want to find out more about time graphers and lift angle and amplitude keep watching. Okay so um, after I've done the video um, I'm just an amateur I'm not a proper watch sleuth or repair or anything I just like regulating my own watches so something I can do myself save a bit of money keep my watches in tip-top condition or working condition um, so I've done this video and I was surprised that someone asked me like a relative sort of novice um, about this lift angle thing and I thought well there must be other videos out there so I've done a bit of research and there is other videos and people explain that but no one really explained it in a, in a sort of easy to grasp way that you could understand quickly so uh, Spent a fair bit of time research and trying to get it sort of set in my brain what it's all about and what, what, what it is and what it does. Uh, so I finally managed to say for myself, I found this picture. And again, there's not that much information on pictures and stuff out there. So I got this picture, uh, I'm going to hold up and show you. Um, I'll also flash it up on the screen in the video. Um, so if you've got um, this is your balance wheel, and on your balance wheel, there's a pin which hits your pallet fork. So this is shown in two positions, one us that way and then one us that way. So when the pin hits your pallet fork, this side, they, they draw a line, and when it touches the pallet, then it goes up, and when it swings back down and it hits the pallet fork on this side, you draw an angle up from there and that gives you the lift angle. Now, why, what this is in relation to amplitude is amplitude is when this wheel swings up one way back the other way all the way up and that's called your amplitude. Now your amplitude will tell you how much wind is in your watch and also how much of that wind is actually getting through the system to, to the balance wheel to drive it. So if you, for example, if you've got a fully wound watch and, and your amplitude is low, that means your, your, your balance wheel is only swinging you know, so much. Um, if that's low then obviously perhaps your oil is drying up in your watch or whatever in the movement there's something sticking it or whatever so that's how they use these type of things to find out faults and, and the sort of health of a watch um, so a good amplitude is healthy um, obviously sort of 240, 250, 260 if it gets to 360 you've got a problem because this wheel is then going all the way around and you get what's called knock where the wheel will knock on one side so I'd have thought that's pretty rare to be honest um, so that's, that's your lift angle when you um, your pallet pin hits your pallet fork from one side you you measure the line when it goes up and back down and hits the pallet fork the other side that's the line that is your lift angle and if you don't know um, a good average for a lot of watches is, is like 53 degrees um, I think that is for my Seiko's um, pretty much now if you don't know your lift angle um, you normally look up online manufacturers charts and specifications if you don't know your lift angle um, it just means your amplitude won't read absolutely correct but to be honest I think that would be near enough for most people so um, I'm just gonna stick my watch right quick on the time grapher and uh, I haven't checked it for a good while I, I know the beat error is not as nice as I'd like it oh so, so the beat error while we're, while we're at it so you got the amplitude of this wheel swinging up one way and then the other now a beat error is when that would go up slightly more one side than the other so that's not spending the same amount of time each side of the pallet fork that's what they call a beat error and you really want that as near to zero as possible so that wheel is actually swinging you know it's exactly the same amount both ways um, mine is slightly out um, I mean I like to get it to zero if you can get it to half I think that you're doing pretty well apparently so um, time graph is on so my amplitude is not bad 245 0.2 on the beat error so I've got that on 52 degrees so um, I'm now going to adjust the um, the lift angle so on here that's set at 52 degrees so you just press your you, you stop it then press your menu button go up to, um, down rather that's on auto right hang on a minute uh, menu that's it I haven't used this for a long while so get onto your menu item put it up to 53 degrees done and let's see uh, what my amplitude is now. That's just, yeah, it's probably gone down a tiny bit. So that's your lift angle, uh, beat error, and amplitude. Um, they're all sort of linked and work off measured from the same thing. The ticks from your 
from your pallet fork and uh, my watch isn't too bad I usually like to read it facing down because that's when I adjust, how I adjust it when I was facing down so uh, let's just give that another start and see what my watch is up to I have got to adjust the beat area at some point I'm not happy with it just let it settle down a bit Right, well, it's, um, that's, quite, that's quite out really to be honest I'm used to it being much better than that and I must say that probably does lose a little bit of time through you know, me noticing it over a month or two so I will be um, sorting that out soon and when I do I'll make a video show you how to adjust your beat error how to adjust your time try and get that spot on so I'll, make, I'll be making a video soon on adjusting the watch um, getting the beat error correct and um, getting, getting the time more spot on uh, as near as zero as I can get it so thanks for watching I hope that was useful to the person who asked um, explained as best I could because um, that is a little bit confusing when it explained in the right way so thanks for watching see you next time